everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is Christopher, and I am here with my awesome co-host and friend, Tom. Tom, how are you? Apparently, I am awesome. As always, you are always awesome. We are doing a time hop today for a movie that's a little of an interesting uh, pick for the two of us. We are going to talk about 2022's Shin Ultraman. This is a superhero film directed by Shinji Higuchi. And it's a reimagining of the 1960s Japanese television series Ultraman, created by Eiji Tsuburaya. A giant silver extraterrestrial figure accidentally kills Shinji Kamanaga, a member of the S-Class Species Suppression Protocol Team, or the SSSP. The alien takes Shinji's appearance and place on the team to continue to protect Earth from further threats, which are many, because another alien Zareb has arrived and under the guise of peaceful intentions begins to influence world nations to annihilate each other. Shinji, the SSSP, and Ultraman have to battle Zareb, another alien with questionable intent called Mephilis, an Ultraman superior from the Land of Light, Zophi, to save Earth and all mankind. I never got into Ultraman when I was younger, um, or at any point. It was not something that I found on our local television that I can recall. No, I I don't remember seeing Ultraman. I mean, I was aware of him. I've seen bits and pieces of clips and such, but it was just not a character I ever got into. In fact, honestly, I learned about as much as I know about um, Ultraman from, like, Ready Player One. (laughs) Yeah, okay. It's actually a little surprising because I know um, we both are fans of um, you know some of the, the oddball stations that were here in town. Uh, Channel 64 was great for showing things like uh, Macross and uh, what, what was called uh, what, Transor Z Transor or something Z, here. Which was Ma- which is actually, actually Mazinger Z. Um, great. And then, of course, uh, Star Blazers, which... Exactly. Yeah. So it, it carried a lot of Japanese programming, mm-hmm. certainly a lot of the the animated stuff, but I don't know if Ultraman ever made it to the airwaves around us. So, so yeah, it, it, it seems like something that would have been right up my alley. You're talking about you know a, a, a giant superhero fighting kaiju, giant monsters, yeah. you know, uh, including literally Godzilla, or at least the suit, right? <laughs> <laughs> modified slightly. <clears throat> uh, to be a different a different creature at, at at least in one or two episodes, but yeah, I never I never got into it. I I know people that were well into it and watched all of Ultraman and Ultra Q and Ultra Seven. I mean, there's like yeah. half a dozen different series now based on this character. Well, and, and iterations of his look and uh, of which this film even went into. Uh, apparently, the color variation of the character himself yeah that was something they did in this film and i kind of think that was apparently from what i've read in the series he was given like a uh like a three minute warning light or something Mm -hmm. Uh, he had some uh, like a uh, something that, that glowed on his chest and when that thing started glowing or something like that that meant his power was starting to run out and he'd have to you know figure out a way to defeat this kaiju before he he turned back yeah. into a human. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think so. I'm wondering if the uh, the color change in this one was kind of like a replacement for that, and maybe an homage to some of the other looks that Ultraman has had through the years. I mean, he's yeah, it's possible. Yeah, he, he he. There are plenty of variations on the theme and the color scheme, and I'm sure they all had their reasons for being. So I kind of felt like. Maybe that was playing to that. I was really curious to see how I'd like this film without having any Ultraman uh, knowledge, right. without going in with either with any baggage or expectations. And <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't say I loved it, and uh, you know, but it wasn't. I I don't think the reason I didn't really like this film had anything to do with the Ultraman character no. or really the story. I had a bigger problem with just how this film was shot. It it felt like the director had a real problem with like attention deficit disorder. 
Well, and I was going to ask you about that, or our audience, if any of you have watched it. Um, yeah, he like when we introduce the the female protagonist in the film, we went out of our way for like the entire introduction of her to not show her face, and and then when they do show her face, was that supposed to mean something? <laughs> right. Yeah, there are times the way this thing is shot, you feel like um, it was mistakenly cropped or something. It was like, oh, we, it was full screen and they cropped at the widescreen and they just took the top and bottom off of the frame or something. <laughs> oh, well, there were moments during this film where there was leg cam where that they're just for whatever reason, they sat the camera on the floor and they shot that. Like right. what? What was this angle for? While there's dialogue going on, there's people having a conversation on the ta- on the desk above them, and we're seeing their feet. Right. <laughs> so yes, no. the The way that it's shot is, is a little problematic at times, uh, and and I'm trying to give a little forgiveness to th- this is a. This is a Japanese production. I watched it in English dub. Um, I'm sure there's some things lost in translation, but the visuals shouldn't be one of them. Yeah. Now, I watched it subtitled. Yeah. And I still came away kind of feeling like, what am I looking at? (laughs) I don't understand. And and I don't... I'm hoping it's not a that big a difference culturally, but even just um, the characters' relationships to each other and how they develop that that out. Um, I'm just going to say right out of the gate, one of my problems with this film is I don't know how much time has gone by during what we get to see. Everything just kind of happens next, happens next, happens next, and it feels a lot like somebody took an entire series and trimmed it down into a single movie because the progression of things that happen, the characters that get involved, like even by the time you get a cool bad guy, he, he's out like yeah. almost immediately. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if that was intentional too. I wonder if it was meant to feel like they were taking a series of Ultraman episodes and editing them together into a film. Right. Because it does feel that way. Because this either took place in a day or a year. You really don't, you 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 can't tell. You get no sense of that, which, uh, again, I'd feel better if I knew that it was spliced together out of a a series. Uh, Because then some of the development between... I always struggle with those movies where they introduce two characters that have never seen each other before, and yet by the end of the movie... One cares so deeply, and you have no sense of how much time has passed. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely the uh, well, I always call it the Hollywood romance, but yeah. in this case, you know, <laughs> I guess that wouldn't really fit. But it's it's the movie romance, I suppose. It is the movie. I just met you, but now I'm willing to die for you. <laughs> yeah, or I'll be lost forever without you. Or- yeah, it, it just it, it plays weird, but um, but this is where I kind of want to know: is there a series that this was chopped up from? Because <laughs> honestly, I want to see more of some of what I saw. Yeah, like uh, and I, I forgive me. I uh, I'm gonna pick the the. Well, I'm counting the kaiju as one group of bad guys. and I mean, we got a couple of them, and then they were gone. That was it. That was the end of that. And then we got the the, the short little alien dude that could EMP everything and all that. Zerub. Zerub. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And, and he was out of there like a shot, too. I mean, almost no difficulty in clearing him out of the picture. Um, and then it was that next one. What was... Do you have his name? Mephilus? Mephilus. Something like that? Something yeah. like that. Um, him I was interested in. And I felt like that could have been an entire like season uh, of a series developing him, what's going on, 
how he is trying to like it was really actually rather well written from the perception of what would an alien like this might maybe do that would ingratiate him to the population while he carries out his nefarious goals and, and, and I'm like that had lots of potential there and it's it's a mere blip in this movie and then when you get to the final reveal that he is like Ultraman he can he has this larger form and he can have this crazy battle with super energy weapons and all that and it was such a, a buzzkill of a fight <laughs> Yeah, it's over almost before it begins. With no actual resolution, he's just like, eh, screw it, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, no, he finds like, oh, oh, your your boss is watching. Well, I'm out of here. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why is that a thing? So, again, there, there's some stuff left on the cutting room floor somewhere that I'm like, wait, 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 there's probably some good story in there that I need to know what the hell just happened. Well, I don't usually do this for time hops, but because I was so unfamiliar with the source material, mm -hmm. I did put out on social media that I was watching this and asked if anyone else had seen the film mm -hmm. that maybe they could fill in some gaps or just what did they think of the film in general. What did we get? Uh, we did get a few things. Uh, our friend Monty Light says it's one of his favorite films. So gorgeous, so expertly constructed. He really dug this one. Everybody has their thing. <laughs> Uh, Paul Mintern says, I saw it as well, and same as you, I had no real knowledge of the original show, but hey, it's Japanese action on a big screen. It was entertaining. I enjoyed it. So he actually went and saw it when it was on its brief uh, theatrical release here in the States. Oh, very cool. Uh, there, uh, Someone, uh, C.M. Skiera, says, I have vague memories of it as a kid, referring to the original show. Aesthetically, I think the new one pays homage to the original, but more than that, I can't say. Looks interesting for sure. <laughs> Chris Mount says, I loved it. He says, but, but he says, I heard the Blu-ray coming out didn't license the international translation and did their own, and it's bad. Mm. So I, I hadn't actually read that, but <laughs> as I said, I did watch the subtitled version off the DVD, and the only subtitled track that you get is actually the closed captioned. Yeah. So, as well as the translation, you get lots of, you know, monster roaring, rumbling, right. uh, laser sounds. <laughs> those those are always fun. <laughs> it, it was a little distracting. I, you know, like, you couldn't throw on just a separate, no? Yeah, you, okay. don't, have, yeah, you don't have just the language track. <laughs> uh, Pete Quint says that it was a good time, so he enjoyed it. And Jeff Owen says that he has no history with it either, but enjoyed the heck out of the film. Very so, cool. so there you go. Yeah, I was hoping to get someone. Uh, Derek Cook, a friend of mine, fellow podcaster over at Monster Kid Radio. I know he's a big fan of, of Ultraman. Yeah. And I was really hoping to get a get him on just to share just you know, 15, 20 minutes or so and, and talk real quick. But unfortunately, timing schedules didn't work uh, him being all the way on the west coast doesn't uh, doesn't help matters that, that doesn't help but maybe you know if he's interested do a little blurb for us and we'll figure out how to put it out there yeah please absolutely or you know and if if he is so inspired he would certainly be welcome to come on and we'll do a, a <laughs> we'll do us a, a, a follow-up if his show wants to do the uh, do this movie and invite us in for the conversation we could do that Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I love the way it looked. I, I feel like it could have been something that I could have really loved, but I really, I it fell short for me. I, I, I am going, it, it, it fell short for me too, because uh, like I said, it, it, it's choppiness. I wanted to, ha I wanted more background. I wanted more time with certain characters. So I knew what the motivation for where we were going with any of this was. Um, but because I'm me, I'm going to throw it out there. I, I was a little charmed a bit by the constant uh, panning over to an Enterprise uh, <laughs> model that was on one of the characters' desks. And whether they intended it or not, and given the nature of the character that those belong to is somebody that I could kind of consider a, 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 a compatriot, 
Uh, but what I was enjoying about that and maybe reading more into it is, is that notion of having Star Trek kind of in the background. And since the movie kind of was about as much as it was about Ultraman and these other characters, it was also about where does humanity fit in an ever increasing galaxy uh, now that they're on the stage of it was talked about that the earth could become a hot spot for developing biological weapon out of mm-hmm. us. So, and that goes back to my love of a, a, another Japanese character, Giver, um, and the notion of bringing a little bit of Star Trek into it. The idea is, can humanity take its place amongst uh, the larger community in the galaxy? And they kept panning to that every time they needed to go to a moment where this guy had to rise above his just sheer fear of everything going on and come up with a better plan. And I even like that there's a point in the Ultraman character wants humanity to figure it out themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and I liked that. I just wish they could have developed a little more around it. <laughs> yeah, there was a really great idea in like the last five minutes of the film right. when Ultraman <laughs> and his and his boss there, Zofie, are talking. And Zofie's like, oh, no, I'm going to destroy the planet because they could be too dangerous and they could develop into, you know, super beings like us. And Ultraman's trying to argue in our in our favor going, yeah, but no, they could be so great. And well, maybe you're right. Okay. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything just happens a little too fast. Kind of like the, the leaps of faith taken in this film are insane. <laughs> so Shin Ultraman, I mean, if you've heard of what we had to say about it, what we thought of it, if you want to give us a little bit more in depth, um, opinion of your own, please, uh, send us an email, send us a message, come on, to the, follow the link in the show notes, come to any of the social media sites and, and leave your comments because uh, we really love to, to hear from you. And I feel like I came in halfway in, in a conversation and I'm not quite sure what was being said. And I, yeah, I, <laughs> you're struggling. You're struggling. I'm struggling. So I'm struggling and I, and I, it, it, it's almost frustrating, I think a little bit for me because I just feel like, Oh, this, looks like something i would really love why don't i (laughs) right no exactly and this had elements here it's like all of the other people that have given us feedback it is fun if you can put it in that japanese genre the rubber monster movie kind of thing it had very much that feel where a lot of the times the only scenes you cared about we're when the big figures were on the screen doing their thing. And that's kind of how I felt about a lot of the rubber monster movies from 60s, 70s, 80s and all that. So if you can get into it for that, it's a good time. If you want yeah. a little bit more, some depth, some character development, don't look under this rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and I think that's that's exactly it. Is like this thing was made for the giant monster fights, mm-hmm. but so much of the film was taken up by the humans and and this attempt at this human interest in these stories and this machinations of one person against another and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And it wasn't fully realized. Right. It's like 75% of this film feels unfinished because you don't get the whole story. Right. So if there's a series that came from this or uh, or comes from this or was made, this was made from it, put that out in the world i might give that a shot all right well that's going to do it for shen ultraman thanks everyone for listening we'll be back in a week with a full episode we'll talk to you then bye see you